So one of the cool things about modern video editing software, and it doesn't matter which one you're using, if you're on Final Cut, Premiere Pro, or even Resolve, you have access to scopes. And in particular interest is the vector scope. We can actually have a line, either called the skin line or skin tone indicator that shows you exactly where skin tones should sit. Check out this shot from Inception. As you can see, his skin is right on the line. Or the shot from Dunkirk, again, right on the line. Or even this shot from Seven, Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt are right on the skin line. Even, let's check out the Joker. He's right on, uh, okay, that must be a mistake. Well, check out this shot from The Matrix. Again, right on, okay, that's a little green. Well, okay, check out this shot from Blade Runner 2049. Oh. Oh, come on! So either those movies got it horribly wrong, or maybe there's more than meets the eye when it comes to the skin line. Let's check it out. Hey folks, Nathan here. So today we're talking all about that line on the vector scope that goes by many names. You may know it as the skin tone indicator line, the I and Q line, the in phase line. Whatever you wanna call it, that's what we're talking about today. But before we get into the practical application for modern filmmaking, we gotta go over some of the history and the technical information. And if you wanna skip that, time code right down here. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So going all the way back to 1954, black and white television broadcasting had been around for a couple decades. But with color broadcasting being the new thing, the NTSC analog television color system was introduced in North America in 1954. Now I will note that there were three systems. You had NTSC for North America and some parts of Asia, and the rest of the world used either CCAM or PAL. But for this video, we're gonna be focusing on the NTSC color encoding system. So the problem with analog color broadcasting at the time was that black and white TVs still existed. And if they received color information, you would get these black dots showing up in your image, which was less than ideal. So the way they solved this problem was by encoding the color. And they did this through using a luminance chrominance encoding system and using quadular amplitude modulation. So the way that quadrature amplitude modulation works is you have one signal and you can picture it as a sine wave and you have another signal that is perfectly out of phase with that signal. So when you add the two together, they cancel each other out. And an easy way to show this is actually if you think of noise canceling headphones. So you have your outside sound that you're looking to block out. And what noise canceling headphones do is they listen to that sound with a microphone and then invert it so that the waves cancel each other out, so you end up blocking out the sound. And this is what's happening in their color encoding system, so the black and white TVs don't even see the color signal because it's being canceled out. But the color information can be retrieved using this formula here, which I'm not even gonna try to explain, so you can display color broadcast on color TVs. So the information was placed on these two out of phase signals that modulate at 3.58 megahertz. And you can display these signals on an oscilloscope, specifically a vector scope on your I or your in phase line and your Q, your quadrature. So as time goes on and oscilloscopes are used for color monitoring, Apple releases Final Cut Pro in the 2000s and includes the use of oscilloscopes to monitor your colors digitally. And they included what they called the eye line as a reference to the in phase line as a guide for where your skin tone should sit on the vector scope. So in all honesty, I'm not 100% sure why the in phase line is actually a good representation for where skin tones should fit. I couldn't find any solid answers in my research. If I were to guess, I'd assume if there's one color you're gonna get right, it should be the skin tones, but that's just me totally spitballing. I'd love to hear from someone who knows that system really well because I'm not 100% sure. Either way, that's how this line got introduced into video editing and color correction software and eventually got renamed into things like the skin line or skin tone indicator as it can act as a great reference for where skin tone should roughly sit on the vector scope under white light conditions. However, not everybody has the same looking skin, let alone are we always under white light conditions. So let's check out some examples in Resolve. So here we have a shot under normal white light conditions, and as you can see, her skin is sitting on that skin tone indicator line. But if we go further ahead in the shot, as you see, she opens this book, we get this green light all over her face, which then pushes her way off that line. Now, the reason for this green light, if we go ahead further in the shot, is you can see there's kind of this magic effect that comes out of the book and illuminates her face. You can see that this green light puts us way off the skin line here. We're all the way down here to better match our environment. Because this green glowing effect is being presented as a light source. And if you have this green light source in front of your actor's face, 
well, it should make their face more green, right? And I'll show you another example of that from the Joker. So if we analyze this shot, we can see that his skin is definitely being pushed in kind of a cyan direction. And it's clear that there's some blue light source on his face and you can even see it in his eyes. Now, I haven't seen the movie, but I'm guessing he's probably looking at a television or something late at night. But we can jump to another shot from the same movie of him in white light conditions and you can see his skin is sitting right on the skin tone indicator line. And this can help give the viewer a frame of reference. So if we go to our shot here, we have him again in white light conditions, but we can go further ahead. And now we have him under kind of these blue lights where he's near the skin tone indicator line, but he's being pushed in that blue direction because of his surroundings. But it doesn't always come down to the surroundings or the light sources. The skin can be a different color for stylistic reasons. Check out this underwater shot from Aquaman. So if we look at Jason Momoa's skin, you can see that it pushes more in that cyan direction. And the reason why the filmmakers chose to do this, if you've ever looked at the ocean or a lake or even a pool, water looks blue. And for it to look blue, that means that it's reflecting blue light, but absorbing other colors of light. So if we look at our scopes, you can see that our blue and cyan colors are on this side. On the other side of the wheel that would be getting absorbed would be your red and yellow, where your skin would sit. And if you wanna learn more about that, check out my underwater skin tones video. So that's great and all for the underwater look, but if we skip ahead to this shot for the Matrix, you can see that his skin is sitting green. And even on this next shot here, you can see that her skin is also very green. Now this is more of a stylistic choice as you can see everything around her is pushed more in that green direction. Now, if we go back to the close-up shot of Neo's face here, so we can see that his skin and kind of everything else is green in this shot, but let's push it closer to how it looked probably on the day. So we're gonna push it more in that kind of magenta direction. Yeah, that's probably closer. Maybe we can push our skin up a little bit and then maybe push a little bit more, kind of a red, orange there. There, so this is probably closer to how it actually looked on the day, but the final look that the filmmakers chose to go with was closer to something like this, and that's part of the beauty of filmmaking. It allows you to create your own world with its own unique look and style. And while it's great to have a vector scope with a skin line as a good reference point for where skin should be under white light conditions, you're not bound by that. The only thing you're really bound by is, well, creativity, I guess. <laughs>Especially if you're starting out, it's a great reference point for kind of the ballpark you should be in, especially if you don't have a color accurate monitor. It just lets you know that at least you're in the right field. Anyway, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.